Hey there. What I've got on the table there is what I think is a pretty special knife. This is an Elsner Schwiss Officier Messer or Officer's Knife Type 1909. So Elsner Schwiss being the predecessor Victorinox and this being the second version of the Officer's Knife. It's a very early example of a Swiss Army knife. And as you can see, it doesn't look like uh, your modern Swiss Army knife. It's uh, got a lot of differences, and we'll talk about those. But first, I'd like to put this knife in perspective. I want to show you an image out of a book that Victorinox published in 1984. It's called The Knife and Its History, written on the occasion of Victorinox's 100th anniversary. And um, what this page is is basically the evolution of Swiss Army knives. On the left-hand column, your soldier knives, and on the right-hand column, officer's knives. So that very first image at the top is the very first knife that Carl Elsner patented uh, back in 1897. It had red fiber scales, it had no emblem, it had carbon steel blade and tools, and as you can see there from the picture, four pins through the scales. Uh, the second one is the one I have, the 1909 version. Uh, in 1909 they introduced the shield as you can see there. Uh, also had red fiber scales. These are the only two knives in that progression that have the red fiber scales or the wood fiber scales. And this one is down to three pins. Um, these are basic standard or Spartan models. The example I have has four pins. Um, I don't know if that's because it has an extra tool. But I think that's kind of curious. Then the next one is the model 1937. I also have that with me just to show for comparative purposes. That was the first year that they came out with the red plastic or cellador or cellulose scales. And then I also have some images here from a 1903 Carl Elsner catalog. This can be had off of SAC Wiki or multitoolmuseum.org. So this is the 1903 Carl Elsner and uh, Ebach, Schwiss, Ebach being the town that the knives were made in, Schwiss is the canton. And I'm able, uh, one thing needs to be said, in 1902, uh, Carl Elsner introduced a couple extra features. There was a, he introduced a saw, he introduced scissors, a toothpick and tweezers, and a shackle. So this is a 1903 catalog, it's the first time you probably can see these things, and I am able to find my knife there. It's the um, model number 237, although these won't have the shield. You can see the tool configuration is the same, showing red fiber scales there in this uh, kind of crude drawing. If you look really hard, you can see four pins. Now, one thing I found curious about this catalog is that one of the earlier pages where they're showing the officiers uh, und Sportsmesser uh, officers and sports knife mitt shield with shield well there it is there's the shield so according to the Victorinox book shields weren't placed on the knives until 1909 but here in a 1903 catalog we see a shield at least on this basic standard or Spartan version and none of the other knives depicted in that catalog had a shield so a little bit of a contradiction but you're always running into that with um, these Swiss Army knives from Victorinox Okay, so let's take a closer look at the knife. And uh, as I mentioned, it does have the brown wood fiber scales. Uh, this is the first type where they introduced the shield. One thing I wanted to point out about the shield is that while most people are aware that older Victorinoxes have a thicker shield that was made of nickel silver, um, I was uh, surprised to learn that these really old ones have a thinner shield and a much smaller shield. And also, a little detail here, if you look, you'll notice that the cross inside the outline has no connectors, if you will, like the one on the right. This is a 1937 knife, the next one in the progression. Uh, also helpful to look at here is the shape. I think that the 1937 version has a little more taper at the top end than the older ones. Uh, and the older one certainly is thicker. Now, this has an extra layer because it has a saw but uh, it's much thicker, so different uh, stock materials, I think. 
1902, they introduced, as I said, saw, scissors, toothpick, tweezers, shackle. Mine does have a saw and a um, shackle, as you can see here. And um, so now let's look at the tools. Let's look at the opening layer first. So you're going to have the old style can opener and very old style screwdriver with no cap lifter. And again, just to compare that to the next one in the lineup, there's really no difference between the can openers between the 1909 version and 1937 version, but look at the screwdrivers. And of course, you know, if you go a little further on in that progression, then in 1946, they went to the lobster style can opener. So let's take a look at that saw. Saws had nail nicks until 1950, so this one's got the nail nick. There's your saw. Double tooth cross cut saw, just like today. A little different shape, particularly here at the end. And then let's take a look at the pin blade. Now, there were actually three styles of pin blades. There were two clip point blades and then today's spear point blade. So this very early version clip point blade went until, I want to say 1949 or so. Um, that was a slightly different shape clip point blade and then in 1973 you got the, uh, or thereafter you got the spear point blade. This blade is in great condition. It's straight, it's uh, shiny, sharp. There's no creases, bends, breaks. Great. Now the main blade, it's a spear point blade. The most interesting thing about it is the tang stamp. It reads Elsner Schwiss. And the Victorinox book also shows that this is the first stamping used on these knives. There were two versions of it, one with block letters that were straight up and down and one with block letters that were uh, at a slant like this one. Now usually if your blade is stainless, you're going to see anoxid or something on the back later you know um, rust fry or stainless this one has nothing it would be nice to think that this was carbon steel that would be helpful in dating this knife it would make it older victorinox didn't start using stainless steel on these officers knives until 1923 i find that interesting too because um, they changed the name of the country, company to victorinox in honor of carl elsner's mother victoria and Enox, short for an oxidable, the French word for stainless, in 1921, but they weren't using stainless on these knives until 1923. But the general appearance of this blade and the other tools tells me this is probably stainless steel. It just has too nice of a, a sheen to it. It just to me looks like stainless steel that's had some corrosion that you would expect on a knife that's 90 something years old. Here's what an old carbon steel blade looks like. This is a 1908 model soldier, I think a 1948. And you know, it just has a darker, kind of grayish, duller finish. Carbon steel can actually blacken, or at least get a big heavy patina over time from corrosion. And so I'm thinking stainless steel here, which would probably date this knife along with the Tang stamp somewhere between 1923 and uh, the early 30s, like 1931. Let's take a look at the back tools. You've got a sharp, exposed sharpen all, uh, pretty much just like it was uh, all the way up until 1961. And then the corkscrew, the corkscrew is kind of interesting. It's a five turn corkscrew, which was used up until 1983, but it has no fluting. And I thought all the older ones with the five turns had the fluting. So the fluting actually went up until 1991. You can see that on some of the four turn corkscrews but again here comparing it to the 1937 model that I have you know you can see that it uh, it's fluted get the light and the focus right and to me the corkscrew on the 1909 version looks also just a little lighter a little less heavy okay so let's talk about rarity um, these knives are fairly rare. They're hard to get, uh, not just because of their age, but because of the numbers that were produced. Also in the Victorinox book, they do have a schedule of production through the years. Not the number of knives made, but the number of employees they had, the square footage of their plant and offices, 
uh, and their sales in Swiss francs. And you can see that in, uh, it wasn't until 19, the 1940s that all those uh, metrics kind of took off. And that was because the uh, USGIs that were over in Europe during World War II got to know these knives and came back with them. They started selling them in the PXs, and Victorinox started exporting them to the U.S. and other places. And that's really when the production numbers took off. So they just didn't make as many of these uh, before World War II. So not just the age, it's also the numbers produced. Um, also, they're going to be very hard to find in this condition, and the condition of this knife is outstanding. I've bid on these trying to get one um, that had missing shields, uh, broken blades, cracked or missing scales, and uh, I was really fortunate to be able to find and acquire this one. Uh, usually with these scales you'll see some darkening around the pins, some staining, some cracks, um, missing pieces. The only thing that's really wrong with this one is there's a little bit of a swell here on the top scale, but it's hardly worth mentioning. Um, and as you can see, uh, or hear, uh, when I look, we looked at the tools, all the tools are tight, have good walk and talk, they snap open and close, they're fully functional. This knife um, is ready to use. It's just, I think, virtually unused, just old. So um, it's, it's not just the age, it's the numbers produced, and in this particular case, uh, the, the condition of this one. Now, I haven't done much to this. I haven't had to. Um, I used Fitz metal polish, which is non-abrasive, with soft cloth to clean the steel. Uh, I used 2500 grit sandpaper, nothing uh, rougher on the scales, just to sort of polish them and remove the finest of scratches and then put a little wax on there to enhance the sheen. Um, for a knife this old, the first thing I want to do is do no harm and I basically just wanted to clean it. Oh yes, I also use Never Dull Wadding Compound for cleaning. So that's a 1909 Elsner Schwiss officer's knife. I'm really excited to have it. I'm happy to be able to show it to you and tell you what I know about it. Uh, comments, questions, or additional information are welcome. If you have something, please leave it. Thank you for watching and have fun collecting.